How do we manage the protein transition? Which food components can provably boost your immune system? What's the best way to validate health claims for food and food components? Listen to our food and health experts discuss the biggest questions facing the food, nutraceutical, and food ingredient industries today. Welcome to Niso Talks Food and Health. To meet the ever-growing market for food and beverages with a plant-based claim, startups and ingredient manufacturers are reaching further for sustainable sources and side streams from which to extract proteins. Ruud Hesshoff, Senior Project Manager at NISO, discusses the journey to prove the viability of a new plant protein and get it market ready. To meet the ever-growing market of food and beverages of in which a plant-based claim is important, Ingredient manufacturers, but also startups, are looking for new uh, plant-based ingredients from side streams or from new sources. Today I'll be talking to Ruud Hesshoff. He is Senior Project Manager Processing at NISO. And I will be discussing the journey to get the viability of a new plant-based ingredient, but also the market readiness in place. Welcome Ruud. Hi. Ruud, um, first of all, uh, if we talk scaling up of a, of a protein production, what is actually scaling up of protein production um, and, what, uh, uh, and what needs to be done? Uh, scaling up uh, a process is basically going from uh, your idea that you have in the lab towards a viable process for a uh, yeah, beneficial uh, business case, for instance. It's one thing that you um, have uh, uh, like a product that could be interesting for the market, but it's the second thing that you can actually produce it for companies that your product can be consumed. And that's, that's a, that process in getting there, that's called scaling up. And if we talk scaling up, what are, what are the challenges of scaling up for a, uh, for example, for a new protein? One of the biggest challenges is basically the, the, the time that's necessary for your process to come from uh, start to end product. So, in a lab, for instance, you have a, a, a certain technique like unscrewing a cap, getting rid of the liquid, and in upscaling, uh, I need to pump 10,000 kilos of material through a system. Uh, and so, usually, time is the, the constraining factor in, in upscaling techniques. So, if you, uh, I can understand if you uh, uh, develop a process on a on lab scale, the transfer to, to, let's say, the real world is, is, is more difficult. You yeah. gave an example of, uh, I think it's centrifugation, eh, where you unscrew yeah. uh, a tap. If we talk scaling up, uh, usually a pilot plant is involved. Uh, can you explain a little bit what role a pilot plant can play in scaling up? Yeah, a, a pilot plant is basically a, a playground where, where you can really play with different types of equipment, uh, machines, uh, processes to get from your lab towards the factory. Because it's, it's not a simple one-on-one -on -one copy paste of your lab scale to pilot plant. Um, you need different techniques to get there. Like I said, uh, you need to pump 10,000s of liters of material. That takes time. Can we do that more efficiently? Can we do that smarter? Can we do that with less energy? Uh, and this is, of course, uh, very, very nice in a pilot plant to take your time and to investigate uh, in these challenges. You also mentioned that, that time is of, of essence, eh? so the timing yeah. is different on the lab and a pilot plant. Can you explain a little bit about that? Yeah, so one of the things is, um, Again, like I said, unscrewing a cap and getting rid of the liquid, you can immediately continue. Um, in, in, a, in a pilot plant, sometimes you have to wait for hours before you get there. Uh, you have to leave your product maybe overnight. You have to store it. Um, you don't know what this time uh, will do with the quality and the quantity of your product. And these are all these kind of things that you need to, to consider to, yeah, that needs to be uh, solved in this manner. Yeah. And in a previous uh, webcast, we also talked about uh, um, modeling. Can you explain a little bit what, what type of uh, influence the, the modeling can have on, on, on developing this? Modeling is a very powerful tool in um, predicting what might happen in a pilot plant. Um, it's a very cost efficient, very fast way of predicting what might happen. And, and therefore, yeah, it's very important to, to also have the correct parameters into your model, because uh, if you put in 
garbage, you also get garbage out. Yeah. Um, so what we use modeling for is f first we, we put in the parameters we already know, so we kind of expect uh, what will happen. Um, you do the process in the pilot plant, usually it goes differently than, than you anticipate, but you get new information and you can use that information back into your modeling, get a better model. Uh, maybe you find some other things in, in tuning or fine-tuning certain parameters to get your process even better. So it's, a, it's like, a, yeah, it's a, it's a, a feedback loop with modeling in, uh, in practice. So to get it right more easily or at a faster yeah. pace. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So we're talking plant-based ingredients, which is something that in the end we eat. Can you explain a little bit what a food-grade pilot plant can, can play as a role? Yeah, a food grade pilot plant is a pilot plant where we can produce uh, products that you can um, yeah, apply to consumers. So mm -hmm. for instance, you can make ingredients that you can directly put into another ingredient. You can cook them, you can uh, let them taste to customers. Um, you can uh, sell the product also, um, but you can also use the product for uh, panels, for tasting to do all these kind of tests and yeah you just make sure that that a com customer or a consumer does not get ill from your product yeah which is not guaranteed if your pilot plant is not food grade i guess eh? exactly yeah yeah uh, so maybe then it's uh, interesting to know what does it take to become a food grade pilot plant a lot of time <laughs> and work protocols so uh, this is very much defined by law what a food grade pilot plant is you need all kinds of different certificates uh, like ISO uh, certifications for instance you need uh, specialized protocols uh, your building needs to be safe uh, the procedures that you perform needs to be safe you need to safeguard the, the, the cleanability of your machines as well so in our pilot plant we check this on a daily basis per process before and after the process we measure all the microbe contents mm -hmm. to make sure that our cleaning procedures are okay we do allergen tests uh, which should all be negative um, so that's a lot of uh, work and protocols and certificates that you need yeah so it's not easy to become a food grade pilot plant to keep no. it like that no no yeah. no <laughs> uh, that's understood uh, what other useful services may a pilot plant, uh, which is food grade, offer? Um, well, it's one thing to, to upscale your lab product towards uh, a viable process, um, but you can also fine-tune processes. So maybe you have a process that works, but you're interested in, in, in lowering the energy consumption, for instance, which mm -hmm. is, of course, a hot topic nowadays. Yeah. Um, you can go to a pilot plant and test certain procedures from your process already and, and for instance different membranes a different spray dry technique um, different centrifugation steps just to be more efficient uh, use of less water that might be energy cons uh, consuming um, so these kind of things you can also run at a, at a pilot plant so i guess what you're saying is it's not only having a pilot plant in place but but also including a lot of knowledge areas to be able to yeah, to, to do that or to yeah. deliver these promises. Yeah. yeah. So uh, what other useful services may a pilot plant offer? So uh, specifically about our pilot plant is we, we have been a pilot plant for a very long time. So we have a lot of expertise on different fields uh, of equipment or processes uh, based on, on previous products. Um, but also the connection we have with our own lab, uh, with the food safety experts. Um, yeah, w w we have a lot of expertise on the different fields which are all combined in these kind of projects or processes. So we, we always keep, for instance, food safety in our mind. Um, if you have certain steps, so it, it, for instance, a, a truck comes in with material, um, how can we unload that material safely? Do we need to stir the material? We, uh, do we need to filter it? We have filter experts uh, for that. We have uh, centrifugation experts. Can we mm -hmm. separate the proteins from, from, from uh, sugars, for instance? Um, but also, uh, what does that do for, for the safety of the product? Can we store it? We can always go back to our food safety experts to guide us in this process. 
Uh, a very specific example is, for instance, heat treatment of your product because you want to have a long shelf life for your final product. Mm -hmm. We can use modeling to investigate what kind of temperatures we need for how long a period of time to get your product safe because our experts know exactly what might have grown in your product during the process. Um, so we can very uh, specifically pinpoint all these kind of uh, processes, which is a very beneficial procedure for, uh, for using us as a pilot plant. So what you explained to me is it's not only a pilot plant, but a lot of expertise combined to that, that can make it a, uh, yeah. a, a nice place to work with. So Ruud, thank you very much for explaining the, the difficult journey or to, to show the viability of a new plant protein uh, ingredient and to also get it market ready. This was Nisa Talks Food and Health, and if you want to know more, please check out our website. Thanks for your attention. If you enjoyed it, please check out our other episodes via our website and other platforms like Spotify, Apple iTunes, and YouTube. Subscribe through your regular podcast app to make sure you never miss an episode.